Hello and welcome to 2790. This is week 11 and today we're going to be talking about Paul's letter to Titus. Uh, it's another personal letter that Paul writes to an individual uh, trying to encourage Titus not only in how he can be a leader but how he can raise up leaders for the future. So for someone like me who's in, so interested in leadership, this is a great example of so, some leadership qualities that every leader needs to exhibit in his or her life. And again, Paul Paul brings to the fore, uh, I'm going to talk about three, three different leadership qualities. The first is humility, the second is knowing that you need to be a servant, and the third is being hungry for what is right and true. The letter begins and, uh, and Paul tells Titus uh, to stay where he appointed him. And again, we see, we see Paul's role in the early church and especially uh, the church for the Gentiles across Greece and Asia Minor. He is appointing people to go to certain churches. He tells them when to stay. He tells them when to move on. He writes them letter. He writes the, the theology uh, of the early church. And it's pretty clear that Paul is the head of the entire uh, church in Asia Minor and throughout Greece. And so with that kind of those credentials and those who would follow after him and, and uh, he, he carries with him, seems like there's about a dozen, maybe 15 people that Paul is directly responsible for. And that's one of the first leadership qualities that I notice about Paul. He doesn't stay anywhere very long. He, he trains someone up and then he appoints them to stay and continue the work that, that he's doing. He understands himself well enough to know that there are certain things that he's good at and there are other things he's not really great at. He's not a great maintainer of a church. He's a great church planter and a great church starter. He's great at raising up leaders and he's, a great, he's great at appointing leaders. And so, uh, but as far as sustaining a congregation, uh, he seems to draw some harsh lines and that, that offends people. And, and so he understands that that he has to help other people take on a role after he leaves. He even says that to the Corinthians, that he understands his role, he does one thing, and then someone else does something else, and then someone else does something else. But all together, they are uh, the leaders for the body of Christ. So let's look at the three things that Paul talks about for church leadership. The first is humility. He says, do not be overbearing. And he has a whole list uh, of qualities that connected together create a humble servant. Don't be after dishonest gain. Don't be looking after yourself. Be hospitable. Love the things that are good in Christ. Be self-controlled. Uh, live an upright life yourself, you, your family, your children. Uh, be holy and to be disciplined. And all of those together uh, can only happen if you start to put other people ahead of yourself. And so he tells uh, Titus, make certain that you're humble uh, in who you are and when you go to elect a leader to help you in this church elect a leader who's humble elect someone who understands how important it is to put other people ahead of themselves uh, to empty themselves and allow Christ to fill them so that they can allow space for other people uh, to be loved and cared for the second thing he says is that a leader needs to be a servant of other people, not just to love other people, but actually go and do things for other people and serve them and to have that servant heart. So there's, there, there has to be this, this doing, this going out to do things for the sake of the gospel. He says that teachers need to teach sound doctrine, that uh, he, he has a lot to say about women. And I can see why most women, when they read Paul, they go, whoa, where, where's this guy coming from? Uh, the first time you read him, he does seem a little chauvinistic, maybe a lot. Uh, but as you read him and you understand what he's saying, he's just trying to help all of us uh, create a humble heart in our lives, whether that's a woman with her husband or a man with his wife and putting his wife first. Uh, he, he, he just seems to be pushing forward for humility. He Even in this passage, he tells slaves to be subject to your masters. He doesn't condemn slavery. And uh, many of us, we wish he would have. But he, he does not seem to think that it's the church's role to change those uh, social ills. And so he focuses on Titus and uh, on Titus's leadership and tries to help Titus to understand that servants are content 
in the situation that they're in. They don't, they don't try to overturn their current situation. And so humility and being a servant. And the last one, he says they have to be hungry for the truth and they have to be hungry for peace and go after it. Not just a peacekeeper, but a peacemaker, someone who goes after peace. They have to be people who are uh, hungry for the gospel and, and really want to present the gospel and convert people to the power of the gospel and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, here, the Apostle Paul, uh, he has a lot to say about leadership in the church. And he, he draws some pretty firm lines. Uh, if we were to apply those lines to leaders today, uh, I would venture a guess that nearly every leader, myself included, we would all say, well, I don't really fit that category. Well, Paul understands that. And so he includes in his list of qualifications for a leader the understanding that we not only have to be humble, but we have to be repentant. We have to be people who uh, can be changed. We can be steered. We can be corrected uh, in our lives. And that's just so important because people who can't be corrected really can't lead uh, because God is tr constantly trying to steer us and we're constantly making mistakes. And so we need to learn to trust God uh, we have to be men and women who learn to trust the opinion and the resources that God gives us like other people. So uh, Paul encourages Titus to build a team around him and to elect leaders. He calls them deacons and overseers of the church. These are people who can manage things. So the last thing that we learn about leadership is a leader must learn to trust the people that God's given to him in, in order to accomplish the work that God has for the entire church. If a leader gets bogged down into uh, managing every single little thing that's happening, if they micromanage every single person uh, who's involved in their ministry, then they really can't see the grander vision and the, and the larger scale of what God's trying to accomplish. And so we have to learn that when we pray and we say, God, help us to choose the right leaders who fit the needs of the body of Christ that God will steer us and direct us and allow us to lift up the people that are called to be in ministry. Uh, and we need to learn also, like Paul does, we need to learn to challenge our leaders to holiness. Uh, and that's what he's doing with Titus here, and that's what he's encouraging Titus to do with the people who are going to work alongside of him. And so often it's difficult to look a leader in the face and say, you know, that's not really the way that, uh, that we're going to work here at the church. That's not really the way that we talk to each other. That's not really how we love each other. That's not really how we care for each other. Or that's not even theologically what we think. Uh, and especially when you do something like that that's related to their family. Uh, so often, as soon as you mention family to someone, they get defensive and they immediately defend uh, their family and their children and as I understand they should uh, but the truth is poignant it, what does it say sharper than any double-edged sword and a spiritual person even though they might initially get defensive they will eventually listen and they will humble themselves and they will help lead a great ministry at your church uh, loyal humble servants cannot be replaced they are awesome and so I want to encourage you, if you're leading in a church or here at Wesley, if you're a leader at, at our church here at Wesley, to listen to these three qualities of leadership. Be humble, be a servant of other people, and be hungry for the gospel of Christ.